end. It's a six nil aggregate win. It, very comfortable scoreline in the end. How comfortable were you 15 minutes into that game as the Jets laid siege? Yeah, not, not very comfortable. Not very comfortable. So, look, we uh, sort of anticipated that um, Molina would probably start as well, that they'd have two good number nines. Um, they're desperate, very, very desperate. When you're 3-0 down, you want to try to score early. Probably a little bit from us, we, we said we saw their man-to-man -man pressure, so we thought, can we bypass that? We probably didn't execute it as well as we like, but we went away from also playing short. So we wanted to try to mix it up a little bit. But, um, yeah, we sort of resorted a bit more to that long ball and then they played a lot of long balls or winning the second ball and it just caused chaos. And, yeah, probably a little bit lucky not to, not to go down. But then I thought after that, yeah, we, again, we created a lot of chances ourselves after that probably 15, 20 minutes. We got a foothold. And there was a, yeah, a couple of moments, even that 15, where we broke and it was just probably our final pass that was let us down. So, But in the end, yeah. Pleasing, and I think the second half was again really, really good. Controlled it much better, and again limited them to not not too many opportunities. Because you talk there about like the chaos, and like if we if you flash back to a year ago, City are being eliminated, a chaotic yep. elimination final against Melbourne Victory. This time around, you've ridden it out, and you've taken out two very professional wins over the Jets, three 0 moving into a grand final. Is that a sign of the growth in this side and how much they've improved across a year? Yeah, I think so. Um, look, last year as well, we, we had the opportunities and it just didn't want to go in. You know, we dominated the, even though falling down 3-1 from 1-0, you know, the extra time we were totally in control. They, what, Victor had a man sent off and then, okay, it comes down to penalties and, and you know, they got the result that time. But we, we learned from that. We had quite a young team and we've just keep, kept developing the way we wanted to play. And, and again, that finals pressure, but I thought, you know, the girls were excellent. We continued to play and... And it was always going to be that first 15, 20 in these games. Same was the story was in Newcastle. We were able to score there to go 1-0 up and that probably calmed, calmed the nerves a little bit. But I think all in all, probably in both games, maybe about 30 odd minutes where it wasn't great. But the other, the other time we, were, we played quite, quite well and, and played some good football. No, she's been a little bit unwell um, throughout the week, so she didn't train the, the last few days and um, came in yesterday and just, yeah, just didn't, didn't feel too well, so we thought, you know, get her off, we don't want to risk anything. I think she felt a little bit in the quad as well, so, again, just precautionary, try to look after her and, and then we'll see how she goes. Hope she'll have a good rest tonight and, and tomorrow and she, she should hopefully be fine by the time we get back to training. We'll see. She's the one that we sort of just rested all week and then we'll have to load her up start of the week and, and just see how she tolerates it. So we won't, I, I won't risk her at all. If there's absolutely, if there's 1% chance of any further damage, I, I, I won't put her, I'll never put her uh, her health in front of her, even though it's a grand final where she, I'm, I'm sure every single player would play it unhealthy, but if there's any chance of further damage, then I, I'll never take that risk and I'll make the decision for the player. Thoughts on CBFC? Um, Dangerous, dangerous team, you know, so it sets up a, a great final. We've had some good good tussles over the years and and I'm looking forward to it. What about this week? Uh, anything different? Have you had a chance to have a think about what might happen this week? Um, a little bit. After yesterday's game, once it was sort of locked in, then I, I've sort of just a few ideas from, from what I've seen and from our previous battles and how they sort of try to play against us. We know the threats they have up front, especially with Courtney Vine, her speed in transition. Um, even against Central Coast, they didn't want much of, much of the ball, you know, lower in terms of percentage. So they're a team that's comfortable without the ball, and we're a team that's very comfortable with the ball. So sets up sets up for a good game, and uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to next weekend. Gaurav, Sydney versus Melbourne City at Amy Park in the grand final. Same thing four years ago. Sydney... There are a few players there from still in that squad this time around, but you look at this Melbourne City team, it's completely different. Four years ago, it was basically the Galacticos of Matilda's yep. friends. This time around, it's young Matilda. Stoddy is the one connection. But yep. it's, it's a completely different Melbourne City. What's been the growth and, well, not the growth, the, how has this program evolved since that grand final four years ago to now? Um, look, for, for me personally, it's, it's an idea. And it's, it always stems from the playing squad that I have. So the, you know, I, I'll never get them to do something that I don't feel that they can't do. So it's never like a fad or, oh, that looks interesting or Leverkusen are doing that or City are doing that or 
you know, it, it, you, you gain ideas from, you know, from other coaches and also locally from watching the A-League and the A-League women. So you, you, you see different things. But we always, for, for me, I try to just give them the, the, um, the ability to showcase all their talents. So we can, we can play football. Um, you know, we press, we won the ball, so th that's sort of, sort of where it stems from. And then, you know, the players' ability as well. So they're, they're the ones that dictate it, they, they're the ones that make it all, all come to life. Um, you know, they give everything every day when we train, and, yeah, it's, it's largely down to them. And this, the reformation that the clubs had to go through in terms of just the playing roster alone, it was a project that your father started, yep. and you've taken over it and continued it on replacing irreplaceable players with this new generation. What's been that been like? What sort of players have you targeted? How have you overseen a transition that very easily could have seen this club go off a cliff, but it hasn't? Yep. Look, it's, it's never easy. I think that first, um, after all those players you mentioned they've left, I think it was like 15 or 16 new players had to come in. So you basically, squad gets wiped and you have to build a whole brand new team and then if players are contracted a bit longer, you probably can't target the ones that you're after. But, you know, after I took over, you know, and also thank my father, he's, he's put an excellent foundation in place, so made it made it quite easier to come in and just add in those final missing pieces. And, um, and yeah, and, and again, it's just a credit to, to, to the youth of Australian football as well. You know, we've got a lot of young players where, um, you know, they come in, they're, they're willing, they're ambitious, they want to learn, they want to improve every single day, and then, and then it's easier to implement the ideas that I have and, and to play the football that they display every weekend. All right, it's the showcase for women's football in Australia next week. City and probably women's football in Australia still kind of trying to catch on, really build popularity. What kind of, uh, I don't know, challenges are there, you know, from your perspective in getting more fans to the AFC, particularly this weekend? Uh, look, I, I hope I hope they do come out. Like very simply, the the girls can play. They can play. It's enjoyable to watch, and um, you know it's two two excellent teams that are going at each other. The two best teams over the course of the season. They finished first and second, and we fought till the very last day to to pick them at the post. So it it, it sets up for a great game, and um, and you know hopefully they they put it out there. They give if it feels up to me, I let everyone come in for free and just fill the stadium. And you know, and 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 let them catch that sort of fever. But whether or not that that will happen, that would be easy for me to say. But it's it's not always like that. But um, you know, there would be nothing more more special than. And it was if I go back to last week, it was beautiful to come out, seven thousand people cheering, and and it gave it the sense of a semi final, gave it the sense of finals. But I think also we have to thank the fans because I saw during the week that it's the highest attended uh, women's sport in the country. So. People have come out, there is interest and, and hopefully we can just continue to make it grow and, and when you come out and watch young talents and you know the Shelby McMahons as well, 15 year olds that come on and almost scored another, another golazzo when she takes the ball and goes through everyone and, and just gets blocked last shot but you know it, it's, it's players like that and, and, and both sides are littered with them where you can watch and, and hopefully inspire the next generation as well that come along. So free entry uh, next week, is that what you say? You have to talk to the APL about that one. But yeah, I would love that, and that, that would get us a full house, and, and uh, that'd be nothing better than walking into a grand final with a full house. So, however, we can make that happen, um, I'm all for it.